Alright class, welcome back to the second lecture. So last time we talked about significant figures and significant figures in calculation and then we do a bunch of practice problems and I'll give you a take home problem to do. Now I want to finish that up. Now before we go over the, the practice problem that I gave you to do at home, I want to go over rounding one more time. So we said you're going to do the calculation and you're going to get a number. And then you have to see how many six digits you are supposed to have. And you are going to round based on how many six digits you need. Okay. Now I want to do a couple practice problems just to make sure we're on the same page. So I put this on the board and these numbers, I want to round all of them to two six figs. Okay, so if I have 72.9, I need to round it to 260 since this is 9, this becomes 73. I have 72.4, since this is 4, if I round it down, this becomes 72. Again, I want to round all of them to 260. Now, 72.5, so we said it's kind of easy. If you have 1 through 4, you round down. 6 through 9, you round up. Now, what happens if you have 5? When you have 5, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to look at the number before. So I have 5, I'm going to round to 2, 6, 6. This number is even. We said if the number is even, you round down. So this would be 72. Then let's come over here. I have 5 here, but this number is odd. So if it's odd, I have to round up. And that would be 74. So far, so good. Okay, so this is how you will round it. There was some confusion, and we're just going to make sure we're on the same page. For five, if you have a five, you look at the number before. If it's even, you round down. If that number is odd, you round up. Okay, beautiful. Now, let's take out the, the, the take home problem that I gave you. Take out the take home problem that I gave you. We're going to go over those take home problems. So the take home problems that I gave you, I want to put it on the board here. So hopefully this helped clarify um, about five of what do you do when you have five. All right. So our first take home problem was 3.2215 times 1.67 plus 2.3. I'm going to ask you to do to do the calculation and then tell me the final answer with the correct number of significant figures. You ready to do this? Okay. Now, the first thing you do, you do parentheses. That's the first part that you do is parentheses. Now, I have addition. And I said, every time you have addition, you are going to line them up on top of each other. So far, so good. Okay. Now, if I do the addition, I get 3.97. And then you go, where do I draw a line? You draw a line where things are not significant anymore. Where would that line be? That line would be nothing is significant after 3, right? Over here, nothing is significant. So I'm going to draw a line where things are not significant anymore. So I have this line. The numbers behind this line are going to determine my significant figure. The numbers behind this line are going to determine my significant figure. So based on this, how many six figs I have? I have two six figs. So based on this, I have two six figs. Now, we said we are not going to round because if you round right now, then you always end up rounding more up then you are rounding down and it's not good because if you keep rounding 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 our final answer is going to be off so we don't round until the very end so now what am i going to do now what i'm going to do i'm going to multiply 3.2215 by 3.97 again we do not round until the end we do not round until the end now if i do that what my calculator is going to give me is 12 point seven eight nine three five five now we are going to round okay now this is multiplication i have to go with the lowest number of significant figure 
How many stick figures this one? Yes, one, two, three, four, five stick figures this one. Now this one, even though I didn't round it, I have to keep in mind that this one is only supposed to have two stick feet, right? This one is only supposed to have two stick feet. I didn't round it, I keep all the numbers, I'm gonna round at the end. So five, two, so my final answer should have how many stick feet? Should have two stick feet. So I need to round this to reflect that only two six feet. This is 12.7, so I have to round it up to, to 13. All right, so far so good. Okay, now the next problem that I gave you, that was the first take problem. The second take problem was 1.008 times 12010. Okay, this is a multiplication. Multiplication, we go with the lowest number of significant figures because we are at as good as our weakest link, right? Okay, how many sig fig is this one over here? 1.008. Zeros sandwich between the numbers, they are significant, right? So this would be one, two, three, four. Oh, I think the number that I gave you had a zero over here too. I just looked at so the number that I had given you for your take home had a zero in here too. Yeah? Okay, good. So now let's let's look at that. So how many six pages is this? One, two, three, four, five. So this is five six pages. Now how many six pages is this? One, two, three, four. This zero doesn't count. So this is only four six pages. Right? This zero doesn't count. Again, a zero counts after a number if I have a decimal. A zero does not count after a number if I have no decimal. So I have five six feet, I have four six feet. You follow me? Okay, so this is multiplication. I'm going to multiply it together. If I multiply it together, what I get is one, two, one, zero, six, point, zero, eight. Okay, now, four, five, my final answer should have how many six feet? Four six feet. My final answer should have four six feet. So one, so now, if that's the case, I have to completely forget about decimal places, right? I should completely forget about the decimal places. Now, how am I gonna round this to reflect four six feet? This is six, so I have to round up. So it will be one, two, one, one, zero. That's gonna be my number. Okay, so again, forget the decimal place, but I'm only four six feet. This now we're gonna have the decimal place for sure. I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five at five, so I have to round it to go to four six feet. Now, some of you guys might have done this. Some of you guys might have rounded to one, one, two, one, one. Did you do this one? Now, if you did that, here's what I need you to remember you cannot change the value of the number. So this number here is 12,000, right? This number here is in 12 thousands. Now, when I round it, I'm still 12,000. But if I don't put a zero here, now I'm 1,200. So be careful about it. After you run, go back and go, did I accidentally change the number? Because you cannot change the number. So you still have to be in the 12 thousands. All right, so far so good, ready for last one. And the last one was the hardest one. That's what I gave it last. So our last take home problem was this. So ready for the last one. The last one, I give you an addition. It was 1780 plus 3500 plus 21.77. Okay, what I told you guys, was that every time you have addition or subtraction, the way to do it, you have to line them up on top of each other, okay? So let's do that. Let's line these up. I'm going to go 1780, 3500, 21.77. And then I'm actually going to add up all these numbers together. So we one. Oh boy, I'm sometimes not good at math. Okay, I'm ever good at math. Okay, so far so good. 
Now what am I gonna do? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to draw a line where things are not significant anymore. Where is that line? This one is a tricky, tricky problem. So significant, significant, significant. Is this zero significant? That zero is not significant because a zero after a number, if there's no decimal places, is not significant. This has only two six feet, right? So we draw a line where things are not significant anymore and this zero is not significant. So where do I draw my line? My line is going to be after, after five because significant, 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 bam, that one is not significant. So that's where I draw the line. So we said the numbers behind this line is going to determine my significant figure. Now, how many is that? That's two. So I am limited to two significant figures. I have to round to reflect that, okay? Now, how am I gonna round it? So forget the decimal places. To round it is gonna be 5,300. So they only need two six feet. Now these are hard problems. I usually give you hard problems for take home. But check this out. You can't just say 53 because you cannot change the value of the number. This number is in 5300, right? I cannot change the value of the number. Same as here. So you can't just say 53 because you're changing the value. So this has 500, 3, 301.77. I only need two six feet for you a decimal place. I need to round this to 5300. Okay, all right, beautiful, beautiful. So these take home problems were hard. If you know them, we are in a very, very good shape. Now, the last thing to talk about for significant figures, and then we can move on to the units, is, this is the last thing to talk about, so the last thing to talk about significant figures is exact number. Ex oh my goodness. Exact. So it's not easy to write on the board. Exact number. And you have exact number when you do counting or when we have conversion factor. I will tell you what exact number it is. Okay. Now, exact number, they do not count when we are considering significant figure. So exact number, we don't count them when we're considering significant figure. Okay. Now, counting and conversion factor are exact number. Basically, they don't have significant figures. I have 27 students. How many six feet is that? Doesn't have six feet because I'm counting. I can't have 27.2 students, can I? No, I have to count everyone as one. So when I do that, I don't, that does not have a significant figure. So to have 27 students doesn't have a significant figure. Also conversion factor, one inch is 2.54 centimeter. That does not have a significant figure. That's just a conversion factor. It's nothing that you measure. It's a significant, it's a conversion factor that is given to you. So we do, do, they do not count when we're considering what are six figures. Again, we're gonna do from now on, every problem we do is gonna have significant figures. So we'll get more practice problem with this as we move on. Okay, so we're done with six figures. Now, what we started last time, we said that as a scientist, we measure things all the time. When you measure, you get a number, but a number means nothing without a unit. And you also have to care about the significant figure. So as a scientist, you're gonna measure things. You measure things, you get a number. A number means nothing without a unit. And then you should also care about number of significant figures. The number that I have, because a significant figure is gonna show someone how accurately, how precisely you measure that number, okay? So we talked about significant figures. You know how to do significant figures and how to report the number with the correct number of significant figures. Now what we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about unit. 
you're going to talk about unit because the number means nothing without a unit. Now, when I emailed you guys, I emailed you guys a conversion fact that was the table. I emailed you guys a conversion table. Okay. Now, I don't want you to have this memorized. I will give this to you on the exam if it's needed. So this is like conversion between the metric system and the US system. To me, if it is, there's something that you can Google, I'm not gonna give it to you. You know, I'm not gonna give it to you. You don't have to memorize it. Okay, so this table again is conversion between the metric system and the US system, and I will give it to you if there's a problem that you need to convert. But what we're gonna teach you right now, we're gonna teach you how to do basic unit conversion. Okay, now we're gonna teach you how to do a basic unit conversion because you're gonna do measurement, you're gonna get a number, you're gonna figure out the significant figure for that number, and then the unit. What if like, you need to convert it to a different unit between the metric system and between the US system? Okay, let's do this. So we're gonna do basic unit conversion. And the way I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna start doing practice problem and I'll show you that way. All right, so basic unit conversion. The first thing we're going to do, we are going to convert 48.3 inches to, to feet. IN is abbreviation for inches, FT abbreviation for feet. Okay, so 48.3 inches to feet. I'm actually converting between the metric, between the US system. Now, here's what I want you to learn from this class. If you learn nothing from me, learn how to cancel out. So if you learn nothing from me, learn how to cancel out. And you're going to be set in life. Not in life, probably. So 48.3 inches. I'm going to write it down. This is what's given to me. Do I want inches? I do not want inches. If I don't want inches, inches is going to go down here. What do I want? I want feet. That's going to go on top. Because to cancel things out, they have to be on the opposite side. So inches is on top. I'll put inches on the bottom so that inches can cancel out and I can end up with feet. Then what you're going to do, you are going to look at this conversion sheet that I gave you. I will give this to you on exam. And it says that what? One, what does it say? What's the, it says one foot is 12 inches. Okay, then I'm going to put that in. Now, math, algebra, don't get it wrong. You're going to multiply everything on top divided by the bottom. So 48.3 times one divided by 12. Now, do this for me. What do you get? What you end up getting is 4.025. Every time you have a number, oh, don't forget the units, right? I'm just trying to teach you guys. Now we have to also care about significant figures, don't we? Yes, we do. Let's do the sig fig together. Let's do the sig fig together. How many sig fig is this? This has three sig fig. Good job. Beautiful. Okay. How many sig fig is this? Exact number. We do not consider them when we want to figure out significant figure. And counting and conversion factor are exact number. This is a conversion factor. So we it has this exact number. We don't care when we're considering significant figures. So how many sig fig I have? I want to have three sig fig. My final answer is going to have three sig fig. Now I have 4.025, okay? This is a great practice problem because we have five here. If I have five, what do I need to do? I need to look at the number before five. The number before five is even. If the number before five is even, what do you do? You round down. So the answer is 
because this is five and that one I have to round down because it's even. So you might do a lot of practice following the significant figure as we go on. So far so good? All right, are you ready for our next problem? Let's do it. Here is our next practice problem. 62.7 inches and I want you to convert it to centimeter, okay? Now, again, you're gonna write down what's given to you. What is given to me is 62.7 inches. Do I want inches? I do not. So I'm gonna put inches down here, what I'm gonna put on top in centimeters. So every time you have a problem, write down what's given to you. You go, inches is not what I want, so I need to cancel it out. To cancel something out, they have to be top, bottom, off of the side. So now I can cancel out the inches and now I'm gonna have centimeter on top. Then you're gonna to go to the conversion factor sheet and then figure out what is the conversion between those two. And if you look at it, it says what? One inch is 2.54 centimeter. One inch is 2.54 centimeter. So far so good, okay. Now, before, pause me. Pause me right now and figure out the final answer with the correct number of significant figure and then unpause me. Okay. How many sig fig is this? 62.7 is? This is three sig fig. How many sig fig is this? Hopefully you're shouting right now. That's the exact number. It's not going to count for significant figure. Good job. So my final answer should have three sig fig and my final answer is 171 centimeter. Don't forget to put the unit next to it. Don't forget to put the unit next to it. Nice job. All right, last problem. Let's do our last problem. You ready? Okay. Let's do and this last problem is a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder, but I think you guys got this down. So here is our last problem. I have 120 grams and I want to convert it to ounces. O Z means ounces. So get used to this, uh, this um, abbreviation. Okay, 120 grams and I want to go to ounces. So what I told you was that, write down what's given to you, which is 120 grams. And probably you go, okay, I want to cancel that gram, so the grams goes here. What I want on top, I want ounces. So the grams can cancel out and I can end up with ounces. Now here is a problem over here. You do have a problem. When you look at the conversion sheet that I have sent you, the problem is this conversion sheet doesn't have a direct conversion between gram and ounces, but that's okay. There is indirect conversion that we can do. So this one is not, we cannot do this because there is no direct conversion between grams and ounces. So we have to be a little bit more creative or we can do that. But if you look at the conversion sheet, there is a conversion between grams to pounds and then pounds to ounces. And we can do that. So I can go gram to pound, this is pound, and there is a conversion for that. When I look at it, one pound is 454. And I will give you that conversion sheet on the exam. Gram, so then the grams can cancel out. Now what do I have? Now I have pound, I don't want pound. The pound is gonna come right here. What I want is ounces, it goes on top. Again, remember, this can cancel out. I don't want pounds, they can cancel out. What I want on top is ounces. And what is the conversion between pounds and ounces? You already probably know that. 16 ounces is one pound. So there was no direct conversion between gram and ounces, but we can go gram to pounds and then pounds to ounces. Okay, math, ready to do it together? You go 120 times one times 16 divided by five, 454 divided by one. So you multiply everything on top divide by the bottom. Now, before you tell me what the final answer is, you have to also careful about significant figure. 
Okay, how many six figures is 120? This is two six figures, right? How many six figures is here? It's conversion, exact number. We're not gonna count it. This one is same here. So my final answer should have two six figures, and what I got was 4.2 ounces as my final answer. So far, so good. Okay, so this is a basic conversion. This is a basic conversion. And I will give you the conversion table so you can easily do this. Um, really nice job. So next time, we're gonna, I'm not gonna give you a take home problem because I'm not quite done with this part yet. Now next time what we're gonna do, we are gonna go over between the metric to metric conversion. And I'm gonna go over that. Okay, I will see you guys next time.